Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm real glad that you could join us again. We're joined this morning by Mr. Josh Clayman, MBA, CEO of Remedy. It's a healthcare technology company, and he's joining us here to talk about how and why technology such as remote patient monitoring or RPM and telehealth should be used to predict future outbreaks and serve as early warning systems for detecting viruses. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Mr. Josh Clayman. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, give us a little bit of a uh, background into your area of expertise, and then let's talk about your role there at Remedy. Sure. I, I've been in technology my entire career. I started in the interest in early days, data analytics, um, data warehousing with NCR, and then was with uh, Dell as an executive for 10 years. And then later in my career pursued mid-cap. Um, companies around data analytics and then eventually 3D printing, which had some interesting applications in healthcare as well. And I've been with Remedy for about three years, just under three years now, and excited to be here. I guess that the unusual characteristic about my career is that most of that time, about 23 years, was overseas. Actually, I lived in Japan a couple times and Australia twice and, and London twice as well throughout my career. Now, as far as this um, this COVID-19 pandemic is concerned, everyone, it's front of mind with everyone. It, it affects every aspect of our lives, and it's going to uh, do so going forward for quite some time, in my opinion. We're about seven months or so into the, into the pandemic. How has Remedy been supporting its customers during this time, especially as it relates to uh, RPM? Yeah, it's it's evolved a little bit. You know, we were nudged very early on by some of our clients and, and actually in conversations with the CDC to help address this issue around just um, staff, you know, clinical staff and patient safety. And, you know, this presented a new challenge to healthcare systems where, you know, people didn't want to go in, they didn't want to be infected by patients. And it presented this sort of new challenge, which seems very old to us now. So, we very quickly developed some remote triage and surveillance um, uh, technology, which allowed health systems to um, kind of uh, uh, search the appointment schedules within their EHR, send text messages to their patients with surveys attached. Mm -hmm. um, now this seems like old hat. Um, and then it, it created a ongoing surveillance um, tool, which, automatically triggered new surveys for those patients. So if they had symptoms and were isolating at home, it could measure the sort of progress of the disease. It could keep them engaged, et cetera. Um, so it was very COVID um, specific initially, our, our efforts. But over time, the core of Remedy became very relevant to these health system providers because um, they felt like they were losing touch with these high risk populations. Mm -hmm whether they were had diabetes or chronic heart failure or hypertension, um, they felt like they were losing touch. These patients were not really allowed to come into clinic and, 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 and receive checkups. Um, there was no real technology platform or method to remotely and continuously engage with these patients. Um, so that became a very stressful situation for these healthcare providers and the patient population. The other challenge I think that COVID presented was this financial challenge for healthcare providers. You know, a lot of the more profitable procedures, the elective procedures just stopped. Um, patients could not come into the clinic to receive the normal checkups. And so uh, remote patient monitoring and the reimbursements associated with that became kind of an important alternative revenue stream. Um, and that still continues. You know, it's becoming, I should say, a, a an important stream of revenue for these um, physician groups, practices, healthcare systems, et cetera. Do you think that um, going forward, uh, this continued use of RPM, even after the pandemic, is going to escalate? Is it offering more efficiency, uh, better tracking of patients? Um, what is the huge, the, the biggest benefit that's going to keep it alive going forward after the pandemic? Well, in our view, RPM always made sense. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the um, the 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 dealing with chronic diseases, which are sort of at epidemic proportions in the U.S. healthcare system, and also a huge driver of costs within the U.S. healthcare system. You know, about eighty percent of the three point five trillion we spend on healthcare is associated with these chronic disease, diseases. Um, and and there was there's really been no effective 
method to improve the management or secondary prevention of these diseases over the last 20 or so years. So we've always been advocates for RPM technology. What COVID, this COVID crisis has really produced is an impetus for faster adoption. So the benefits of RPM aren't specifically associated with COVID uh, or the COVID crisis. Um, this created a burning platform amongst healthcare providers to say, again, how am I going to solve these two issues? One is remote patient engagement, and two is developing these alternative revenue streams. Um, but the need and the, the sort of contrast between in-clinic episodic care um, and its relevance to the care of continuous chronic conditions um, preceded, um, preceded uh, COVID, and, and it, will, it will be there long after COVID, this crisis is, is, is passed. What do you think is needed um, from a government reimbursement uh, perspective to ensure that this uh, this RPM reform continues? Well, CMS has actually done some good work in clarifying um, RPM reimbursements. You know, before the COVID crisis, these reimbursements and CPT codes existed, um, but there was a lot of cynicism amongst providers around denial rates, around their ability to really attract these RPM reimbursements, et cetera. Um, the CMS clarify these codes and the policies that, that underpin them. They also did one other really important thing, which was suspend uh, patient co-pays. So when we looked at kind of the history of remote patient engagement um, and back to some CCM or chronic care management um, policies going back, you would see this sort of pattern of patients enrolling or being enrolled in these programs, not really realizing that there was a copay. And two or three months later, they would say, well, I'm paying like $20 a month for this. I, I'm not seeing the value necessarily. I'm going to drop out of the program. Mm -hmm. And so the suspension of copay and what we hope to be a, just a waiving of copay continuously in the future was a big step forward um, for, for um, reimbursement. I think there's more progress to be made, though. Um, you know, about 30 or 40 million Americans are covered by FQHCs. And these are some of the most vulnerable populations in the U.S. And um, FQHCs, the reimbursement um, frameworks around FQHCs are still very unclear. Most FQHCs do not have remote patient monitoring programs. And these are the very populations that are most suited to this type of remote patient engagement. So there's more, more work to be done here, definitely. Well, where can our listeners get some more information about RPM and about Remedy as well? Well, if you, if you um, search on Remedy.com, we have quite a bit of information, and um, we publish some white papers on RPM specifically, and we have a lot more information on the website as well. Well, Josh, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Josh Clayman, CEO of Remedy. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.